Um, all right. I think that's all I've got. Uh, anything else before we jump into the announcements? No. No, I'm ready. All right. Let's do it. First thing to discuss, uh, last week was the reveal of the Vinegar Syndrome Halfway to Black Friday tales that are coming. Uh, mm -hmm. First, we are getting Navy SEALs as the VSU. We're getting China O'Brien 1 and 2 on 4K. We did know about this one. Uh, and then they announced Homegrown Horrors Volume 3, and this will feature Revenge, Haunted Ween, and Deadly Love. And then Cinematograph announced Dangerous Game on Blu-ray. Uh, these were available to pre-order all last weekend. I think one or two are still available on the site. Uh, don't forget, if you ordered these or plan on ordering any of them, they will not be shipping until after the sale at the end of May. <clears throat> so you probably won't get these till the end of June-ish, unless you're a subscriber. Uh, yeah, I, I'd watch out for those. Uh, any, any of those announcements extra exciting for you? So I'm going to pick up Navy Seals for my fiance. She loves that movie. Uh, one thing I will say is I'm, I'm really upset when, when, how do you say it? Cinematograph? Is that, yeah. Okay. So when they announced Little Darlings, I, I was like, I was like, okay. I was like, this is beautiful, but I didn't, I didn't pick it up right now. I'm kind of right. kicking myself in the butt. And then when, Red Rock West got announced. I had just gotten the umbrella release. So I was like, I was like, okay. I was like, all right. And then when they announced uh, Dangerous Game, I was like, God damn it. There's no way I'm just going to pick up the third and not try to seek out the first to have a complete collection. Right. So now I'm, now I'm kind of kicking myself in the butt. But yeah. And I just have to say, I'm not going to pick up um china o'brien but i absolutely love the vinegar syndrome acknowledged the fact that they were going to do it. i thought that was such a class a class act um you know for them to put out and say hey look we are working on it just a heads up yeah um yeah that's really i mean i i was kind of a little i don't want to say like disappointed at the releases i feel like we have such a high expectation for the halfway to black friday stuff so such a high and navy seals is awesome i'm super happy to see them expanding Yep. what they're touching, but I'm a little bit more intrigued at what the two mystery titles are. They sound decent. Uh, I'm, I'm very excited to seek those out when the time comes, of course. Um, it's, again, Halfway to Black Friday is the second of their, their big states uh, or big slates from the year. Black Friday, they tend to go a little little bigger on, but um, yeah, e eager to see what, what else we're getting. And then, of course, there's going to be other announcements around then, too. You know, there's the, yeah. the, these will not be everything, I'm sure, so We'll find out more. Uh, next up on our list is Criterion already. Uh, first, June 4th, we are getting a 4K of Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Uh, now, this had come out in 4K from Arrow in the UK and I believe Turbine in Germany. So now we are in uh, the third 4K release in Criterion late to the game with this one. So many people probably picked this up. Have you seen Fear and Loathing? Yeah, man. Backcountry, dude. This is a this is a favorite of mine as well. Uh, the first first line of this movie is we were just past Barstow when the drugs began to take hold, and I grew up in Barstow, so uh, I, I take uh, the the line about drugs to heart, and it's absolutely accurate. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, once again, since it's a 4K release, nothing new. Literally just a 4K disc. Everything else about it is exactly the same. So is it like you know how everybody complains about. 4k upgrades everyone's like oh you know yep. this is what companies do but I, I i think there's a big difference between the companies that are like hey we're going to put this out on 4k and we're going to give you a couple of new features right. um cri criterion's just like nope here's a 4k disc and everything that we gave you before and the same artwork have it everything is the same except we'll put a shiny little silver sticker on the front of it yeah, that you'll throw out when you open it anyway. <laughs> right. And then you won't be able to tell if you have the 4K or the Blu-ray unless you read yeah, the back. Yeah, you'll have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Next from Criterion is Querel or Querel. I'm not sure how you say this one because I am very, very white. Uh, so this is coming on June 11th on Blu-ray and DVD. This is a brand new in, uh, introduction to the, the collection. This is a Fassbinder film. And uh, one that people have wanted for a long time. And uh, speaking of AI, this is the uh, the second of third AI, second of three AI controversies from this week. Uh, the first was the Cameron things. Uh, Stan says it's Carell. Thank you. 
than this one. Uh, everybody saw this and immediately said, wow, Criterion is allowing AI art to be used on their covers. And uh, the artist had to come out and say, no, no, no. I use 3D modeling and uh, I, I'm all open to doing stuff like that. But I did edit everything on top of the modeling. And uh, it's it was blown out of proportion for a day and a half. And everybody's still complaining about it because they don't like the cover. Um, but it it supposedly is a, a perfect fit for the film. I've not been able to see it yet, unfortunately. I've not seen many Fossbenders, but uh, this one is a, an interesting insert into the collection. Any thoughts on this? <laughs> that's a, that's a, I, I feel like I've seen that cover in like that weird little romantic novel section of Walmart. <laughs> I, think, I think I've seen this cover before. No, I, I, don't, I, I know nothing about this, but um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, in, I'm intrigued in a weird way. <laughs> like if I if I was at Barnes and Noble, fifty percent off sale, and this was sitting on their very small shelf, right. I'd be like, what "The hell is this?" <laughs> uh, Keith, the film is not animated, no, uh, but it is very stylized, and uh, supposedly it is a very gay film, from what I'm what I'm hearing. So it no definitely it definitely works with this cover for sure. Uh, <laughs> even David says it's probably his gayest, which is saying something. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea based on the cover art. <laughs> well, either way, it's exciting and I'm into it. Uh, speaking of gay, uh, <laughs> Criterion <laughs> is doing bound on 4k and Blu-ray on June 18th. Um, for the record, this movie is a remarkable <clears throat> achievement. Um, I, I hope people check this out. Uh, if you've never seen this, or seen a previous release of it, like the the Olive release. Olive is, uh, you know, no more. But that release from Olive is literally one of their best. And man, Criterion came out and they are taking it to the next level. Um, this release looks incredible. The artwork looks great on this. We are getting on this an audio commentary with the Wachowskis. It is an old commentary. They don't really do commentaries anymore, unfortunately. Um, there's a new video essay on this by Christina Newland. There's six interview programs with a bunch of individuals from the film and uh, some trailers and a new cover by Sister Hyde, who did incredible, including, uh, as always, hiding a little secret heart in there. And you see it in the blood in the mm. bottom left corner. Uh, yeah, Sister Hyde's an incredible artist. Um, Bound. Have you seen Bound? I have. Yeah, I mean, dude, Jennifer Tilly. Come on. That's, you know. I, I actually saw this early on and I didn't even know that this was a movie. And then I watched it, I think a couple of years ago and I was like, Oh yeah, I remember this, but this is how you do a 4k. This is, this is it. No previous 4k release. Perfect movie. I think for the criterion, uh, it needed a restoration. It needed yep. something new. It needed to get more modern eyes on it. I think this is a perfect criterion announcement. Yep. The sums that up perfectly. Fully agree. Uh, next one is Victims of Sin from 1951. This is coming on Blu-ray. Uh, entry into the Mexican pantheon of Criterion Films. Uh, not too many of those. I'm glad they're expanding that. On this one, we've got a new interview with filmmaker and archivist Viviana Garcia Bisnay. A new interview with the cinematographer on the work of Gabriel Figueroa. There's an archival documentary on this, a trailer, uh, some new sub-translations, and an essay by Jacqueline Avila. Uh, this one looks pretty dang good uh, from 1951 and uh, Mexican cinema was kind of killing it back then. That's the most criterion album or cover art I've ever seen in my life. It is a very criterion cover art. Yeah, <laughs> <I> fully agreed. <laughs> uh, next up is uh, another kind of shocking entry to the criterion collection this month, June 25th, Blu-ray and DVD, Barry Jenkins, the underground railroad. Now, the reason this is shocking is because of the runtime on this. This is a, a miniseries. And the fact that this is coming, I believe this is the first one that they've done like this in full. Uh, somebody correct me if I'm wrong in the chat there. But what this feels like is they're kind of laying to uh, laying the groundwork to get Twin Peaks The Return in the Criterion Collection, I bet. Uh, this is like setting the, the I was going to say the groundwork, but I'll say the underground work. Um, to make sure that people are open to it, willing to pay for it, uh, excited about it, and it's Barry Jenkins. He, he's been uh, he, he's been in the collection before. He's somebody that's an incredible filmmaker. I've been wanting to watch this. This is from uh, 2021, 
and it's got some stuff on here. We, we got some audio commentaries on certain chapters of this. We've got a new graphic novel adaptation of Genesis. It's an unfilmed chapter of the Underground Railroad, which was written by Jenkins and Nathan C. Parker. There is a companion film by Jenkins on this uh, called The Gaze. There's seven teasers, which was made by Jenkins for the Underground Railroad, a short program for uh, the building of the, the feature, and then an essay by Angelica Jade Bastien. Like, this seems like an incredible, incredible release. Dude, this is really cool. And and the, the thing is that there's so many good, like, mini series that yep. there, there's kind of like a, um, a very small line between the quality of the film and the quality of the series. Yeah. Uh, so like, I wouldn't be surprised if, I mean, it's probably not going to happen, but like I could see criterion doing like true detective yep. and a couple of other things. If people are willing to pay for them. I mean, of course, obviously everybody's going to wait for the 50% off sale, but I think this is a super, cause this show is what, like 546 minutes or something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. So I think this is a really cool announcement and I hope that this succeeds that way we can see kind of what they might be kind of planning in the background. Yeah, that, that would be sweet. Uh, Brandon is saying, uh, have I heard Criterion acquired to Twin Peaks The Return? No, I've not heard that. Uh, it's just they do everything David Lynch. And so uh, obviously they didn't, never did the original Twin Peaks, but I could see them doing Twin Peaks The Return because it's been looked at as like his most exciting entry in a very long time. So I, I could see them reaching into that. Uh, next up, of course, speaking of Lynch, Blue Velvet on 4K. <laughs> Same exact thing as we just mentioned. No difference from the, the previous release, but we do get a 4K Blue Velvet. Um, I understand it's uh, it's one of those things people are either super excited because they love David Lynch or just, eh, it's just an upgrade. No big deal. But um, either way, I, I'm glad that we're getting this. Uh, all, all of Lynch's stuff should be in 4K somewhere. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think the Blu-ray looks fantastic. Like I, We just watched it not long ago and I thought it looked great. Uh, I'm not going to upgrade, but Dennis Hopper with a oxygen mask on in 4K sounds pretty good to me. Exactly. Uh, anything with Hopper should be in 4K. I'll stand by that. Yeah, yeah. We don't have an Easy Rider 4K. Good call. Hopefully soon. Uh, there was an indicator sale at Orbit, and it's all over. So we're going to bypass that. Uh, <laughs> Imprint in Australia announced that on June 5th they are releasing the Prisoner. The complete series. This is the prisoner from 1967. Uh, quite a well-known movie, and or not movie, quite a well-known show. And this is going to do very well for them. This is the, uh, I think, fifth or sixth release in the imprint TV run that they've been doing, and they are all incredible. Like the the releases they've done for the Avengers, this is going to be a very, very good release. Uh, I, I I'm stoked for this. I'm kind of hoping to get this eventually. I hope it doesn't sell out. But again, it's it's in print. Usually there's only 1,500 copies of the, the limited version of this worldwide. But I don't know. I, I This one feels like it could sell out quick or it could sit there for four years and I wouldn't be surprised either way. Yeah, I don't know too much about... I don't know too much about uh, about this one at all. This has been referenced in lots and lots and lots of things. That's for sure. Is it? Okay, okay. <laughs> Uh, all right go into the well and first i guess speaking of imprint uh they are announcing brand new titles probably in like 25 minutes i think they, they're they're announcing stuff tonight and it sounds incredible in fact it sounds like they're alluding to they might be releasing their after dark neo-noir cinema volume three tonight so we'll see on that mm. Uh, warning to everybody that collects Mondo Macabro next Thursday, they are doing their next pre-order. Uh, we got two titles that you can choose from. The first is Feta Morgana from 1965. This says a man rehearses a lecture he is planning to give analyzing serial killers. He claims that a woman is soon to be murdered in the city. It is inevitable. He explains that some people are born victims while others are born to kill. Uh, this goes into much bigger detail on that, of course. <clears throat> Uh, this is going to be region-free, new 2K restoration from the OCN, Spanish audio with English subs. There's an interview with the actress, Teresa Gimpera, on here. Interview with Angel, Angel Sala, who's the director of the Sitges Film Festival, and a commentary by Rachel Nisbet. And then if you get the Red Case Limited Edition, there's a reversible sleeve. Here is the other side of the art on that one. And then there is also a 24-page booklet with new writing by... The uh, director Aranda, or sorry, new writing on the film and director Aranda by Ismael Fernandez. 
And uh, of course, this will be limited to 1,500 copies. Have you got much from Mondo Macabro? I don't have any. Um, I always see a couple of releases of theirs that I'm interested in. For some reason, I didn't like pull the trigger on them. But uh, I'm going to take a note on this one because I'm really sold on garishly colored visuals and a hypnotic, jazzy soundtrack. So I definitely want to check this one out. I mean, to be fair, that's true of probably... 35% of all of the Mondo Macabro titles. <laughs> it's it's like one of those labels that I feel like I I and it's not it's not to like their quality or anything, but I feel like I see releases from them and I'm like, oh that's so interesting. But then so much time goes before I see it again, I kind of forget. And then I see something like this and I'm like, oh yeah, I gotta check them out. <laughs> uh well I will say knowing the kind of stuff that you've praised heavily, I kind of feel like you would love every single title they've ever released. So I get their warning. Vibes. Fair warning, you would love them. Uh, the next title, which is the one that everybody seems to be very excited about, is uh, Sex Apocalypse. This is the uh, Spanish classified S uh, title. They are doing this now as a series, I guess. This is volume two. So the S classification is like their NC-17. Uh, so hmm. this film was originally done in two versions. There's the S-rated softcore original, and then there's also a hardcore version which uh, they made for distribution in Italy. And this two-disc two limited edition Blu-ray will include both versions of the film. Uh, this, of course, is starring Lena Romay, uh, who is on the slipcover here. And uh, to get that slip, you got to order through the limited release on Mondo Macabro, of course. Um, this one is going to have a brand new 2K restoration of the S-rated version of the film. Uh, there's an interview with Carlos Ared, who's the biographer of Miguel Angel Plena. Uh, interview with Spanish writer and director Richard Requant on the history of S films. And then a commentary by Troy Howarth and Nathaniel Thompson. Uh, but then that limited release here, this is the only time you're going to be able to get this. It's going to have an extra disc entirely with that uncut 108-minute 108 108 version of the film. And uh, this will have a slip cover and then the inner sleeve, which will be new and uncensored. It won't have the band-aids on there, of course. Uh, and you'll get a 20-page booklet by Ismael Fernandez. This looks like an incredible release. Um, fair warning to everybody, if you do order this on your receipt, it will say S Apocalypse, just to avoid any problems with PayPal. I'm buying this as soon as the stream is over. Like, <laughs> It's not available till next Thursday. So set, I'm set buying this arm. next Thursday after your next stream is over. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, man. Yeah, there, there's so much coming from uh, from Mono Macabro. They sent out a uh, an email earlier today, which uh, if you have not seen it, everybody should go out there and check out this email. Let me see if I can pull it up in my other screen while I'm trying to look for this because, oh, man, uh, they basically just announced the rest of the um, slate for the rest of the year. So here it is. Uh, they said the ever evolving 2024 schedule in early summer, we are getting the warrior trilogy is a two disc slip, slip cover set. We're also going to get a seventies French erotica, two disc slip cover set, possibly one more release, but likely just those two. And then in late summer, four brand new limited edition titles, all for the first time on us home video ever. Uh, one of them an Indonesian horror, one of them a Spanish giallo, and then a Japanese and French 70s exploitation pair of shockers. Uh, then the Halloween sale. There will be three 4K releases, including the one that we've been talking about for the last year and a half, Cafe Flesh. Uh, it is going to be a big year for Mono Macabro, that's for sure. Dude, why have, why have I not? This is dangerous dude this is like <laughs> this is like like my alley this is fully this is it right here yeah uh mono macabro has the sleeves that you like they have that uh well-made art house tinge to the sleeves they've also yeah, got yeah. just the absolute depraved releases every so often that you're like <sighs> how did this get made um i i secretly i will say in my heart of hearts i still feel like mono macabro is one of the the last remaining pioneering labels out there uh they they go they go for the throat on every single release um they put their all into everything and then on top of that they're all just amazing movies literally i don't think there's ever been one that i've watched from their catalog that i go you know what this kind of sucked yeah it's companies like this that i wish they would do like a uh 
like a subscription for like a subscriber thing that I could yep. just pay for, forget about it until a package shows up because everything you've talked about, I am a hundred percent in intrigued. So <laughs> yeah, they are, they are, they're, they're pretty amazing. Even everybody needs to buy that, uh, Bollywood horror box set that they put out. If you've never checked it out, cause Oh my God, it is, it is a gift to physical media and it, it has not done well for them. So I, I'm still sad about that. Oh man. Yeah. I'm, I'm buying some tonight. <laughs> yeah, uh, sure. Next up Kino announced coming, coming soon. The visitors from 19, uh, 1972. This is a Ilya Kazan film. Uh, I don't think I've seen this one uh, starring James Wood, Steve Railsback, uh, Patrick McVeigh, Chico Martinez, Patricia Joyce, uh any have you seen this one any thoughts no half of keynote announcements 99 percent of the time i'm like i have no idea what that is <laughs> half of keynote announcements 99 percent of the okay so you've seen none of them 99 percent of the time 50 percent of their announcements <laughs> i don't know what they are <laughs> Uh, next, May 14th on Blue from Kino is Daisy Miller from 1974. This is a Peter Bogdanovich film that people have been dying to get on a really nice Blu-ray, and it looks like we have it here. Uh, brand new 4K restoration done by Paramount. There's a new interview with Sybil Shepard in this, talking about uh, remembering Daisy Miller. There's a new audio commentary by Peter Tunget. Uh, there is a archival commentary by Bogdanovich, uh, and then an introduction by Bogdanovich as well. This will be a solid, solid release for everybody that loves his stuff. I know it's a director that people really, really go for, so I'm glad this is coming out there. Yeah, I'm happy for people that are waiting for this. I, <laughs> I have no interest. I'm sorry. <laughs> I completely get it. Uh, things that I have an uh, immense interest in, uh, May 10th, we are getting a 4k and Blu-ray release of Queen Rock Montreal and Live Aid from Mercury Studios. Uh, growing up, I was a massive Queen fan. Um, Wayne's World was a seminal moment for me, screaming along to Bohemian Rhapsody. Uh, my, my parents raised me on, uh, hair metal from the eighties and, uh, I, I am dying to get this release. It is all of the best songs done in like the peak of their performance. Um, you also got even an audio commentary on here by Brian May and Roger Taylor. There's performance footage and uh, rehearsing for Live Aid. There is just so much on this. And the fact that it's in 4K, I am dying to pick this up. That's for sure. Yeah, if, if, if there's somebody watching this who has never seen any footage of Queen's performance at Live Aid, you, it's a, it's a must-watch even in standard 720 on, on YouTube. <laughs> But also, check out the 4K. <laughs> also, check out the 4K. <laughs> uh, next up, Alphaville, coming on 4K from Kino. This is uh, not dated yet, of course. No idea when it's coming, but it's a Jean-Luc Godard film. And uh, if you are interested in this, I uh, want to highlight Def Crocodile's comment. You should check out The Unknown Man of Shandigore, which is an incredible title in the Def Crocodile slate. Uh, I think that was their first physical release if i'm remembering right and man that movie blew me away the first time i watched it so highly recommend the unknown man of shandigore but uh godard i uh, i'm usually pretty hit or miss on so uh i've not seen this one but interested to check it out this is part of the 50 percent. understood uh <laughs> probably this one too uh may 14th on blu-ray kino's releasing big man on campus this is one they announced last year this has a new audio commentary by the director jeremy kagan and andrew bentler also uh there's including a new interview with actor and screenwriter alan katz on this uh this is going to be a pretty dang good disc for a movie that is pretty much forgotten by a lot of people uh glad this is coming out and uh hope people pick it up this is one that I saw and I was like, I actually, I, I've never seen this, but I know this movie. So 50 per, the other 50%. <laughs> we got a rare one, everybody. Uh, <laughs> next up, uh, another one of my favorites, June 4th, we are getting a 4K steelbook of Rango from Paramount. Uh, the steelbook design's pretty rad. I'm just glad this movie is getting more attention and more love. This movie, I mean, it's, it's also... It's kind of telling and ironic that we're talking about this the same week that Fear and Loathing was announced. Uh, there's yeah. so many parallels between those two movies, but Rango is is a modern masterpiece of animation. Highly recommend it. Super underrated. Uh, so many people didn't watch this because it came out in that that glut of like 
DreamWorks titles that were kind of overbearing, and a lot of people just looked the other way. This looks incredible. Yeah, I feel like every time I bring this is one of my favorites. I feel like every time I bring this up to people, they're like, "Oh yeah, I forgot about that." Yep. So this is exactly. awesome to see. Yeah, can't wait to see this 4K. Hopefully, it looks amazing. It's Paramount, so it could go either way. Um, uh, self promotion for a quick moment. Uh, put out the interview with Altered Innocence this week. Uh, I promised that last week, and uh, I'm so glad that we could finally have this out. I, I did this interview with Frank like six or seven weeks ago and was just sitting on it for a long time um this this was such a long time coming i i first reached out to frank a little over like somewhere around like two years ago and they have grown in leaps and bounds since then he has been incredibly busy and i i hope people check out this interview because the amount of knowledge and passion for the type of films that he put out it radiates through this entire conversation. It was fun. Like I, I felt like it was just two people that, that love his films, just hanging out for an hour. And it was, it was just a good time. Yeah. As somebody who doesn't own um, many altered innocence titles. Uh, one of the things I love about like film in general is just being able to appreciate uh, the, the passion behind it. And even though I didn't know, half of the titles you guys were were talking about are brought up i just enjoyed listening to two people talk about what they love so if anything it was worth worth it 100 percent for that nice well thank you you're welcome uh next up vestron continues uh re-releasing their discs in steelbooks uh may 14th walmart exclusive steelbook of the gate is coming Nothing new, still the exact same uh, Blu-ray that they put out a handful of years ago. No new special features, just a Blu-ray steelbook. Um, again, this uh, this was in, in their okay period of transfers, but this one didn't really look that great, unfortunately. I, I, I think that this deserves a little bit of a new restoration or a, an upgrade. To, I don't really want to say an upgrade to 4K necessarily, but this one needs some help. Um, but I understand loving the steelbook. It, it is a very nice steelbook for this movie. I can't really complain about that. I think that's the best art they've done for any of the steelbooks yet. Yeah, probably. And the next one we're about to talk about is pretty damn good too, actually. Yeah. So I'm going to jump to that one. Uh, the Lair of the White Worm. Um, the same thing. They're doing another re-release. Still May 14th. Still mm -hmm. Walmart exclusive. Um, this movie is a great movie. The Vestron scan of this is not good. It is a fairly muddy scan. Um, the Steelbook, though, blows everything in that release out of the water. This is a beautiful Steelbook. Uh, I am... Uh, <laughs> I, I'm stoked about it. I'm laughing at a Def Crocodile's comment. My mom just asked me if I could send her a dead alligator pin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, um, that yeah. cover rules. That, that, my only problem is, man, I have like 20 of these with slips and this is one of the titles that I'm that I'm missing that I haven't put out the 25 30 35 dollars for yet right so I'm hoping I don't know if Vestron collectors are going to like replace the slip versions some are these, already and that and that price will come down a little bit because I'm not I'm not throwing one steel book on the Vestron shelf with the rest of the slips it's just not happening I'm. I would not be surprised if all of the Vestrons uh, that are getting replaced, which I don't know if all of them are getting replaced. That would be intense if they did all of them, obviously. But uh, the ones that are getting replaced, I imagine the slip versions are going to drop in price by mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah, um, yeah. The Steelbook looks good, and it's a it's a okay price. Uh, it's I, in fact, if I remember right, I think it's even cheaper than the original Blu-ray with the slipcover when it came out, even after inflation and all that. So. Yeah. How much are these at Walmart when they come out? This, I the think it's ones? 25. 25 okay. or 20, something like that. But this is uh, the, the Vestron line. A lot of people forget this because Vestron has been super cheap for the last couple of years. Uh, Vestron, for their first 19 releases, they were $30 on release day mm -hmm. and didn't go on sale hardly ever. Uh, and then yeah. after they started lowering their prices, I think they got called out because it's you you own the films you don't have to pay licensing why are you charging so much for these uh once they they got wind of that and they started releasing things for like 12 dollars, then the prices started to come down on everything and people started to like diabolic has done like three vestron sales since then where everything was super cheap well i was just at monster mania and they had 
like five or six older Vestron releases. Like I'm talking like in the teens of the like they had like a couple really early ones with slips for like 20 bucks wow. just on the table i was like man these things are still around there <laughs> <laughs> yeah there are a lot of slips available for these things that's for sure yeah uh next up decal and bleaker street are teaming together to put out sasquatch sunset this is coming on may 28th uh Ari Aster is executive producer on this, and uh, man, does this movie sound fun. It says, in the misty forest of North America, a family of Sasquatches, possibly the last of their enigmatic kind, embark on an absurdist, epic, hilarious, and ultimately poignant journey over the course of one year. The shaggy and noble giants fight for survival as they find themselves on a collision course with the ever-changing world around them. Uh, in this, we got Jesse Eisenberg, Riley Keough, and... Uh, David and Nathan Zellner are the directors behind this, and they call it the greatest Bigfoot story ever told. Uh, we've got a Sasquatch birth journal number two in this, uh, and then there is a short film that was presented at Sundance called Sasquatch Filmmaking. Uh, either way, this sounds super fun. I remember the uh, reviews out of Sundance being pretty good. <laughs> Did you see the trailer for this? I've not watched the trailer yet, no. Okay, so I put it on. I was just watching trailers sitting on sitting on my couch next to my fiance, and I, I was like, "What the hell is this movie?" So the trailer starts, and about ten seconds in, uh, it just cuts to a shot of Sasquatch doggy style, and it's not <laughs> it's not like YouTube friendly at all. And she just looked at me. She's like, "What the hell are you watching?" <laughs> like, oh man, no idea. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that's how it goes, unfortunately, sometimes. Uh, next up, this is one of the biggest announcements of the week for sure. Bad mm. Lieutenant from 1992 <clears throat> coming on 4K on May 21st from Kino Lorber. This was announced a handful of months ago, I believe, or maybe it was, maybe it was last May. I think actually, this one almost took a full year to come out. Um, so on this one. Of course, brand new 4K restoration of the film from the original camera negative, which is great. We get a new interview with the cinematographer, Ken Kelsch, and then new locations feature it on Bad Lieutenant. Uh, but the big thing, of course, is this is notorious for having an unrated cut and an NC-17 cut. Uh, I looked up the, uh, the film on the Kino website, and it looks like this is going to be the unrated cut. Unfortunately, I do think it's going to be missing. There is a song that's been cut out of literally every other release of this except i think the laser disc and i i'm mm -hmm. doubting that we're going to be getting that full cut but it is the first time in a long time that we're getting the unrated cut it's going to be in great 4k i'm sure this is going to be a remarkable disc that'll sell very very well for them yeah this is definitely i think going to be one of the releases of the year for them for sure nice call out yeah uh this sounds good and it's it's harvey keitel and uh, super, super young Harvey Keitel era. Uh, this is, this is an incredible movie. It's been a long time since I've seen this, but super into it. And it's, uh, it's another Bill or Abel Ferrara film. Um, I, I know that people have been into him and we've been getting a lot of releases from Ferrara lately. So stoked on it. Yeah. And then hopefully we can get a 4k of the Nicolas Cage, bad Lieutenant sometime soon from Kino and you can do a double feature. That would be nice. Uh, May 28th in a 4K steelbook from Warner Brothers is the 1989 Batman. And a lot of people hated this when I posted this because of the cover. Um, I just wanted to point out, just in case you did not realize, this is literally just Warner Brothers releasing a standalone uh, steelbook of what they did in their steelbook collection from a handful of years ago. There's nothing different. It's the same disc. It's the same steelbook. Uh, this is... Not something that everybody needs to complain about. If they end up doing all four of them, they do look really nice together. I understand you didn't need the word Batman over the bat cover on the front. It's not that big of a deal. Come on. It's just a silly steelbook. Yeah, this is... I thought the same thing. I was. I don't have the, 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 the steelbook uh, set that they put out. Yeah. But I was like, I'm pretty sure that's the same exact steelbook that was in that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Craig says, I thought the point of Steelbooks was they were supposed to have great new artwork. Well, if you ask the studios, the point of Steelbooks is to have collectors buy them. <laughs> that is literally the yep. definition. <laughs> yeah, uh, pretty much. Next up, uh, 
well, we already talked about this, but uh, just so you know, uh, on top of all of the old releases of the Physical Media Advocate, there is a brand new issue that just dropped this last week. Um, we got some great pieces in this one, including a really fun piece on Richard Kelly. Really fun piece. Look at that. Really fun piece on Godzilla. Uh, there is a, a section recommending um, adult films from Vinegar Syndrome from uh, film blogger Sam. It's a, it's a pretty, pretty great issue, if I can say so myself. Next up, one we rarely hear from, Flickr Alley. They are putting out Never Open That Door from 1952. That is coming on June 4th on Blu-ray. Uh, this is preserved by the Film Noir Foundation and uh, UCLA Film and Television Archive. And this is going to have an introduction uh, to uh, the two films, because, yeah, actually there's two films on this, by... Eddie Muller, who is involved in noir all the time. Uh, if I Should Die Before I Wake is going to be on this. There is a rare archival conservation scan of that uh, third film in the trilogy. There's an audio commentary for Never Open That Door by uh, Guido Segal, a new documentary in Cornell Woolrich, and then a handful of some other things. This is a solid release, and if you like classic film, I'm sure you already know Flickr Alley is great at what they do. Um, but what they are producing tends to get overlooked by a lot of people. So highly recommend checking out some of their stuff. If you're into some of the classics, um, they are a little pricey. I will say when they come out, they, they tend to hover around 35 bucks on their website. And then this, when they have a sale, the, the sale price is like 28. So it's rough, uh, but they, they're generally worth it. I mean, they put a lot of work into it. This is the kind of company that you you feel good about supporting because the work that they're doing. So it says that it was originally a three part anthology. So this is one film that was in that anthology. I believe you actually get or... all three. Oh, okay. Okay. That's cool. Uh, let's see. Uh, anthology war, which tells never open that door was released separately from the 73 minute film. If I should die before I wake adapted by the screenwriter, blah, blah, blah. An exceedingly rare archival conservation scan of If I Should Die Before I Wake is featured in this release. Okay, that's cool. So either two out of the three or all three. I, I'm not sure if that... F they don't really explain that super well. Yeah, Everybody's just seen this, let I, me know. Yeah, when I read that, that was just that, that intrigued me. Yes, yes it does. Me too. Uh, Nicomedes is asking, is Vestra on the label partnering with Eureka? No, uh, I don't know of any label partnering with Eureka. The only thing I know is Eureka is releasing in the U S through MVD entertainment. It's just, mm -hmm. that's their distributor. So there's not really a company partnering with Eureka. Yeah. That was cool that they announced, um, like grindhouse releasing, uh, distributing for them. And then Eureka, the MVD is getting, they're getting packed. Yep. That's for sure. Uh, Altered Innocence actually is uh, going through MVD as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Speaking of MVD, July 9th, uh, MVD is re releasing The World of Kanako. This is from 2014. This was previously a Draft House films release, the imprint of the Alamo Draft House. And they, they did nothing brand new. It's just the exact same disc coming back out. All of the Draft House films releases went out of print. And this was. Last I checked, this was going for like eighty to a hundred dollars on eBay. So um, this will this will immediately lower the price on that, and everybody will be able to see this. This movie is supposed to be incredible. I've not seen this one, but it looks great. Yeah, this is this is this intrigued me when you posted this. This intrigues me. It says it's a nonstop visual and emotional assault to the senses. I am into that immediately. Sold. Yeah, sold. Uh, maybe the second biggest announcement of the week for many people that are around my age. Uh, April 30th, we are getting Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island from Warner Archive. Uh, unfortunately, they are pairing it with the inferior sequel, Scooby-Doo Return to Zombie Island. But we are getting that first feature from 1998, which is really cool. Um, I I'm glad that we're getting those. Uh, we've got the full cut of this. Um, it is a good restoration, I'm sure. Warner Archive never disappoints on that front, so... More animation means I am happy. Yeah, this is a day one for me. Absolutely, 100%. Has to be. Uh, next up, we are getting You're a Big Boy Now from 1966. And uh, man, this is interesting because it's Francis Ford Coppola's UCLA Film School Master Thesis. How often does that happen that we get physical media releases 
of a UCLA Film School Master Thesis. Uh, obviously, this mm. one is a little bit different, considering it's Francis Ford Coppola with Rip Torn and Geraldine Page and a handful of others. And uh, this even uh, was nominated for an Academy Award, which is wild. Yeah, Geraldine Page was nominated. Oh. This is a big, big deal. So is this before, because if I'm not mistaken, he did... What was his? What was Francis Ford Coppola's first? But it was Dementia, Dementia Thirteen, right? Yes, Speaking I believe that came so, after this one. Okay, after this. Okay, because I, I I watched Dementia Thirteen, the Vestron release, not long ago, and I was like, I thought it was a really it was really interesting to watch, kind of see where his career has gone. Because uh, I just before that I watched uh, The Outsiders again. So this will be this will be really interesting to uh, yeah. to see. This one I might be interested in. Yep, this is a good one. And if you're going to pick this one up, you may as well pair it with The Rain People, another Coppola release. Uh, this one's starring Shirley Knight, James Caan, Robert Duvall. Um, no extras on this except for the trailer, but this is one that people have wanted for a long time. Also, may just be me, even though it's simple, this is a, a beautiful cover on this. Uh, yeah. I, th something about the simplicity of this is just perfect. Um, I, I've not been able to see this one, but I definitely wanted it. Oh, Dementia 13 preceded that one. Thanks, Nicomedes. Oh. I could have sworn it came right after. Uh, then we got Friendly Persuasion from 1956. Uh, this one is going to have an excerpt for Wide Wide World television series on the making of the film, the original trailer, and then, of course, uh, this is going to star Gary Cooper and Anthony Perkins and Dorothy McGuire. I've not seen this one. This is the one that I think I saw the, the least amount of people talking about. Yeah, I don't know nothing about that, but that's a cool bonus feature, though. Yeah, I, I'm glad that that's on there. Um, oh, thanks, Craig. Uh, in fact, if, if you if you are a fan of Craig's, there's all kinds of Def Crocodile in those physical media advocate uh, releases. Craig wrote Craig wrote a couple long pieces uh, that we that we carried over across two episodes or two issues. That is, it's a really great piece. That honestly, I've gotten the most feedback on that piece, probably compared to everything else in all of them. Uh, people really love that piece. Um, the lab, maybe the last, I may be wrong. Uh, the next one from Warner Archive, The Nun Story from 1959. This is a big deal. Uh, Audrey Hepburn, this is one of the last titles of Audrey Hepburn's. I think we have like two more left coming to, to Blu-ray eventually, uh, or that need to come to Blu-ray still. Um, this is a big one, uh, one that people have wanted for quite some time. Uh, very, very like lauded film, including uh, it was nominated for Best Picture, um, mm. lots of, uh, lots of great names attached to this and it's Audrey Hepburn who, who's always great. Yeah. I already covered Scooby-Doo. Thanks, Sibner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Uh, April 30th from Warner Archive, The Mask of Fu Manchu, which means now we're getting very close to, uh, fulfilling all of, uh, this, um, I think they've got one more film or two more films in this era that they've been putting out uh, ever so slowly of these horror classics. Uh, mm -hmm. This is going to have a commentary by Greg Mink on here. And then we got some classic cartoons, Freddie the Freshman and the Queen was in the parlor. Uh, glad we are getting this. Boris Karloff one all the way back from 1932 also stars Myrna Loy. That's a big name for quite a few people. Yeah, this is a cool one. When I saw this, I was interested, immediately intrigued. So I can't wait to check this one out. It's Karloff. Kind of got to. Of course. Yeah. All right. Eureka. Now we were just talking about them. Uh, June 24th in the UK and then June 25th in the US and Canada. They are giving us a Blu-ray of the Miracle Fighters. Uh, this one is with uh, Yun Wu Ping and it's going to have uh, new audio commentary by the man, the myth, the legend, Frank Jang. Also, another new commentary by Mike Leader and Arna Venema. I'm always stoked when they get both of those groups, basically, to, to do a new commentary. It's so great to be spoiled like that. Uh, interview with Yun Wu Ping. That's a, an archival interview. New documentary featurette by Michael Wirth on Yun Wu Ping. And then reversible sleeve on this one with a limited edition booklet with new writing by James Oliver. Eureka! You got money by them? Um, I don't. This is actually like... This is a, a, a genre I need to get into more. Um, I didn't grow up watching a lot of 
a, a lot of kung fu, a lot of that kind of stuff. Even even like it, it took me until this year to really get into like uh, Hong Kong action. It actually started with um, I got sent a copy of uh, the In the Line of Duty movies, and that I watched those, and I was like, man, I need to dive into this a little bit more. So I'm kind of starting. I, I have some Arrow uh, stuff that they've put out recently. Uh, that I want to dive into and see if I can kind of, this becomes a genre I can become, you know, more into. Well, good luck. Cause uh, fans of martial arts have been eating well over the last couple of years. If you, oh, yeah. if you get into it, there is every title under the sun to choose from. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, next up is the red peony gambler one through three. This is from 1982 uh, coming on June 17th in the UK only on Blu-ray from Eureka. This is going to have a slip cover and it will have a new audio commentary on all three films. Uh, Tony Raines is speaking on this new interview with uh, him. Then there's trailers and a collector's booklet with new writing on this one. I've never seen any of these. I, I saw a handful of uh, good comments about this one. So curious to check this out. Definitely want to look at some reviews first. Uh, and then now, saw... go ahead. I saw it said it was inspired. It inspired, I guess, Quentin Tarantino for Kill Bill. Yeah. Yeah, okay. this is one of the big ones. Okay, interesting. And then uh, out of nowhere, uh, they announced a uh, U.S. and Canada exclusive. So they're not releasing this in the U.K., which uh, made some people really pissed off for fans of Eureka. They're releasing Beast Fighter, which includes Karate Bullfighter and Karate Bear Fighter. These are coming on the 25th of June in the U.S. and Canada. These are both from 1975, both starring Sonny Chiba. Um, if I had to guess... I'm willing to bet that both of these have animal scenes that the UK would not allow released in in the UK. So that's probably why it's not coming out. Yeah, I mean, look at the abyss. <laughs> uh, exactly. Yeah. Uh, this one is going to have a new commentary on both movies by Mike Leader and Arna Venema. And then we got a new video essay by Jonathan Clements on this. And then a booklet with new writing by Eddie Falvey. Um, for fans of Sunny Chiba, I'm glad this is coming out. This is this is a big deal. Eureka doing exclusives for the U.S. though. That's that's kind of a surprising thing because they they could have a lot of titles considering what they've been putting out over the last couple of years. Excuse my ignorance to the genre, but I think this was one of the titles I picked up the Executioner Collection from Era. I think that's Sunny Chiba, right? Yes, I believe so. Okay, so so that's going to be my first foray into some Sunny Chiba because I picked that up during the nice. last Barnes and Noble sale. So. And if you're into it, I believe there are one or two Sonny Chiba collections from Shout as well. Nice. Okay, cool. Yeah, there's there's quite a bit from Sonny Chiba out there. Uh, then Kino announced May 21st, they are re-releasing their uh, copy of Revenge of the Ninja from 1983. This will have a new audio commentary with, once again, Mike Leader and Arna Venema. Uh, this is another one of their, hey, we realized that old release sucked, and so we're doing it a little bit better. They are taking their 2015 disc and coding it at a higher bit rate and putting it on a BD50 disc, and it will have uh, a little bit better presentation, of course, and then a new audio commentary. It also has English subs, which that first one didn't. So this is uh, an okay upgrade. I know there's a lot of people that were begging for a 4K release, but I don't even think this will probably ever get a 4K scan. So uh, unfortunately, this is probably going to be the best we get for at least another handful of years. Props to them for at least adding a new commentary. Yeah, I, I think I think in this day and age, if you're going to just re-release the same film on the same format, you got to do something new for sure. Yeah, yeah. A uh, handful of more releases came out this afternoon. May 28th, uh, Vertical Entertainment is putting out The Bricklayer from Rennie Harlan, uh, starring Aaron Eckhart. Two names I never expected to say in the exact same sentence. Uh, glad this is coming out. I've not seen this. I've not heard any reviews or anything. This is from last year. Uh, I did put a trailer on here. It looks, it looks very modern action cliche type film, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, this is, this is odd. Aaron Eckhart was like one of the most desired actors in Hollywood for a handful of years. And now he is, uh, acting in a Rennie Harlan film in 2023 called the bricklayer. Uh, yeah, <laughs> just, just wait until you hear uh, Rennie Harlan directing a Strangers trilogy. That's that really I shocking. understand a little bit more. Uh, <laughs> funny enough. Yeah, I can't wait for the Strangers chapter two. Strange harder. <laughs> Even more strange. 
<laughs> look at that tagline. The tagline is some secrets <laughs> are deadly. Come on. Yes. Uh next, uh Film Movement is putting out Hotel from 2004 in a 20th edition uh, 20th anniversary edition Blu-ray release on June 25th. This movie does not look terrible. This movie looks fantastic. Uh, the trailer for this is linked. If you've not checked it out, please go check it out. Not seen this. Uh, also not sure if this is going to come as an OCN partner label release since Film Movement is now partnered with them. It could, uh, but also it very well could just be a standard on their site, unfortunately. Um, this movie does, though, look really, really well done. The acting looks incredible. I am I'm most likely getting this one as soon as possible because it sounds and looks like a stupendously made movie. Yeah, I watched the trailer and I was interested immediately interested. So I can't wait to check this one out. Good, 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 good. Uh next up, only a couple left, I think. Uh Drive Away Dolls. This is coming on June 17th in the UK on Blu-ray. This is a brand new movie from uh Ethan Cohen. And uh, it is coming around that time in the U.S. as well. You can already pre-order in the U.S. But the U.K. is getting quite a different release. They're getting a Blu-ray and DVD double feature, uh, rigid slipcase, three theatrical postcards, and a 32-page booklet. And nothing like that will happen in the U.S., I'm sure. So, uh, yeah, I, I wish they would. Uh, unfortunately, this probably won't get picked up by Orbit or anybody like that. If you want it, you're probably going to have to import from Amazon. Yeah, this is. Um, I actually liked the trailer for this, um, so I, I was intrigued. But I just wish the U.S. would get cool stuff like this, man. Like when when they did, um, I forget when they did uh, Chucky season one and two, and they released the Good Guy editions. Mm -hmm. I, I missed out on importing those, but those I was like, dude, that's ten times cooler than what we got here. So, so much, much better. Cooler. Yeah, jealous. Uh, finally, for this week, we are ending. On a June 11th release from Paramount of South Park, joining the Panderverse. Uh, my big question, I haven't watched South Park in a very, very long time. Isn't this only like the length of an episode? Or maybe at <laughs> most like 45 minutes? How is this getting a standalone Blu-ray release instead of just going in the season collection? Is Are people still waiting on a release of the, the movie? Did that has that come out on Blu-ray yet? The South Park, the bigger, longer, whatever. What, I'm not a South Park fan, so I don't know what that South Park, going. bigger, longer, and uncut. Um, yeah. Thank you, Tony. Tony says it's only 48 minutes. Um, 48 yeah. minutes. Why is this a standalone release? It should be with the season. Um, I believe uh, we are getting the film from Paramount this year in 4K, which is wild. Mm. Um, <laughs> yes, it was a special on Paramount Plus. But also, wasn't there another special around the season as well? Couldn't you put them both together? It's 48 minutes. I don't know. Paramount does weird things. It's, I don't know. <laughs> Is there anybody out there who owns every season of South Park and revisits the those ever? Does anybody do that? <laughs> I mean, I have. I've got the first, I think it's the first 20 seasons on Blu-ray. That's crazy. It's like The Simpsons. It's like I, I used to back when I when I started collecting. I was getting DVDs. I bought um, I bought uh, like I went to a pawn shop and they had like the first like thirteen seasons of The Simpsons, and I bought them. And then I was like, I'm I'm never gonna watch these again, probably ever. So I ended up giving them back to the same <laughs> pawn shop. <laughs> Tony Tony in Australia says I have all twenty six seasons and specials so far. Nice, nice. And then Eric says I have the first movie on Blu Ray. That's it. But I do enjoy the early season. Yeah, the early seasons are where it was at for sure. Uh, after we go over the announcements, we go over what is coming out next week. Just in case you forgot, uh, it is the the last week of the month, so it's going to show all of the Vinegar Syndrome and OCN things. Those are already shipping for most people. Um, next week, we got To Die For from Criterion in 4K. Primal Fear 4K from Paramount. The Iron Claw from A24. Did you watch that one yet, Iron Claw? No, no. I'm, I I pre-ordered it, so I'm going to watch it uh, as soon as it comes in. Damn good movie. Uh, the Amelie Steelbook. Again, this is a Blu-ray, not a 4K. Uh, Burial Ground 4K from Severin. Did you watch that one yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, great transfer on that one. That one's totally worth it. I, I knew the answer. I was trying to get you to, to wax poetic. Yeah, that, that movie <laughs> that movie is wild, and uh, I'm glad they gave it a 4K. Um, next week, we get They Drive by Night from Warner Archive. The uh, 
Cult Epic's release of All Ladies Do It 4K from Tinto Brass is finally getting released. Berserk, the complete series uh, from uh, Discotech. Paint Your Wagon 4K from Kino Lorber, if you're into that. Wednesday, the complete first season. Three Godfathers from Warner Archive. When Evil Lurks from RLJE, eager for that one. Uh, a little movie called Bubble Bath from, uh, is, is it pronounced Deaf Crocodile, I think? Uh, the Bounty Hunter trilogy from Radiance will be available for everybody, even though you've already been able to buy that on Orbit and everything. Stand and Deliver from Warner Archive. That's a big one. North Dallas 44K from Kino. Money Talks from Warner Archive. Night of the Blood Monster, a.k.a. The Bloody Judge, coming in 4K from Blue Underground. Uh, we've got a handful of others. Patrick 4K, I think, is finally coming out from Indicator. Uh, the Batwoman from Indicator as well. Snapshot 4K from Indicator as well. Uh, Inspector Wear Skirts 2 that I just showed everybody. That's coming out. The Boob and Why Be Good double feature from Warner Archive. I know people are long wanting that one. Uh, the Panther Women double pack. Uh, sorry, the Panther Women is a digi pack release from Indicator. Santo versus the Riders of Terror. Uh, lots coming out. Saint Omer, The Little Drummer Girl from Warner Archive. Film Noir, The Dark Side of Cinema, number 18. 18. Jesus. Uh, let's see. I think that was about it for all the big ones. Unless you're really dying to see Polar Rescue with Donnie Yen from Wilgo USA. Um, yeah. I think we are <laughs> scraping the bottom of this here barrel. Uh, Annie coming out next week that you are eager to have or already picked up and love. Uh, so I have One Evil Lurks coming in because I feel like it's been forever since that. Like you know, came out. I feel like yeah. it's been a year, but you know. Um, and then I have uh, all ladies do it to k to continue my Tinto Brass collection. I got that coming in as well. Nice, nice. Yeah, I did the uh, Kickstarter for that Tinto Brass, and eager to see that book that they do. Yeah, uh, yeah. More Mara Tierney coming to Blu-ray is always a great thing. Amen to that. Watched the Abyss last night. If there was ever a reason to get a seven point one setup, it's that one. Ryan looks and sounds amazing. I know it's my next big purchase. I promise. Uh, saw someone post an image of going south on Twitter. Why is it oversized? Uh, well, Cinematograph is doing that for all of their releases. It's an oversized media book. I yeah, it's 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 quite a bit larger. It's a uh, pretty damn big, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> and then of course the poignant. What an expensive hobby. And Jimmy yes. the Lift just says yes. Uh. <laughs> yeah, expensive, expensive hobby is not the word, not the phrase to explain it. I'm broke <laughs> all the time. <laughs> same, same. Thank you for watching the Disconnected. On the way out, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel, that you've liked the video, and that you've copied the link to be able to share it with someone else that may appreciate this.